Hello, my name is Cynthia Ritchie, and this is my open letter to Donald Trump, the next president of the United States of America. Dear Mr. Trump, in one week, you will take the oath of office. I would like to draw your attention to a few things that I've noticed as a world traveler who spent a lot of time, especially in the Middle East and South Asia. Coming back to America after a lot of my world travels, I've looked at my country and gone, what the hell is going on? Islamophobia, xenophobia, Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, Trans Lives Matter, vax versus anti-vax parents, Native Americans versus big oil. Is there any segment of our society that doesn't feel like it's at war with something? Our nation is in a state of frenzy, and that state of frenzy is driven by an amorphic fog of fear of which the mainstream media is responsible. The internal insecurity of our nation can have an impact on our national security. And the mainstream media, in my opinion, plays a significant role in inciting many people to riot. Inciting to riot, by the way, is a crime in many, if not most, of our states. So should we consider punishing the mainstream media for inciting the masses to riot? You yourself are not blind to the ludicrous levels some media will stoop to reinforce their own narrative. It's a phenomenon known today as fake news, but it's not new. If this fake news happens at the micro level, affecting someone such as yourself, don't you think it's reasonable to assume that it also happens at the macro level, affecting nations, their peoples, our foreign policy, and how we as the American people are perceived in the world today? I urge you to turn a critical eye towards who's ultimately controlling the media manufacturing many stories and spreading untruths to create widespread panic and to prevent peoples from truly getting to know one another. One example was when I was in Islamabad, Pakistan a few years back. I was there when that ridiculous video that was created by some strange person with multiple identities created this ludicrous thing that somehow insulted the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I was staying at the Marriott Hotel, happened to turn on my news, and I see live on an international network thousands of seething, angry Muslim Pakistanis holding up signs, death to America, because they were rioting in protest against this ludicrous video. I look out my window, I see five or six people on the street. Just to be sure, I go out of the hotel, go to that very intersection, which was pretty much across the street from my hotel, by the way. There's 10, maybe 12 people protesting. I have personally seen computer graphics being used in international news stories, credible international news networks, manufacturing things that just simply weren't there. Back to Pakistan. Many Americans wonder why Pakistanis, for example, are not more grateful for the billions of dollars in aid that is pledged and ultimately poured into that country. What most Americans don't realize is that the average Pakistani never becomes the recipient of that aid. The monies are transferred from one kleptocracy to the other. And all the people on the ground know in Pakistan is that the corrupt keep getting richer and richer and the monies pass from state to state and that ultimately America is helping the corrupt become more powerful. The U.S.-Pakistan relationship over the years, the past several years I've been living and working in Pakistan, I would describe it as a bipolar, schizophrenic, impulsive gambler, with the U.S. Congress being the primary enabler. You, Mr. Trump, are a businessman who seems concerned on saving the U.S. taxpayer money. I urge you to take a serious look at how aid organizations are really spending their funds. How many cents on the dollar actually leaves the USA and what happens to the money thereafter? 
I've personally witnessed INGOs, international non-governmental organizations, taking funds from State Department and claim they had active women in child-friendly spaces, for example, when they did not. Revisiting the monitoring and evaluation accountability process is critical. And just as you ensure the return on the investment in the Trump Organization, I hope you do so for the American people. If aid monies are not spent overseas as the U.S. taxpayer is led to believe, perhaps these international aid programs need to be suspended and redirected to our people here at home to improve our quality of life, education, health care, treatment of our veterans, to name just a few areas where we could possibly stimulate our own economy, and ultimately, hopefully, improving our faith in America. Finally, I hope you remember America's motto, E pluribus unum, out of many, one. Appreciating our nation's diversity, but emphasizing our commonalities should be one of your core responsibilities as President of the United States. I hope you and your administration respect the values and belief systems of the many cultures in America, as I know you appreciate the American people doing for your wife and the future First Lady, Melania Trump. Ms. Trump brings a unique perspective that's critical to our nation's history. So too do the many other immigrants who chose to come to America to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. Thank you.